I think we all know that Instagram is where common sense and logic goes to die. It is a anti-vax and haze community wet dream of nonsense and feel-good attitudes that won't make you change, but will make everyone change just for you. All right. So today we're gonna go through Instagram because as I said, Instagram is a land full of nonsense that is just ripe to look at and honestly, kind of make fun of because there's some wild stuff out there. We're talking like flat earthers level weird. But today we're gonna target a single hashtag that I've seen pop up more and more in the haze and fat acceptance body positive community. And that term is anti-diet. So right off the bat, that's stupid. That's the most stupid phrase I've heard today. Cause you know what a diet is? It doesn't have to do with restriction or calorie counting or keto or any of that nonsense. Technically those are diets, but a diet is just what you shove in your mouth. What you eat day to day is your diet. Whether that be one of the name brand diets out there right now, the whole WW Weight Watchers or the keto or any of those, that is a type of diet. But a diet's just what you eat in the day, day after day. Whether that's macaroni for 20 meals a day, which would be my dream diet, or if you're eating a mix of veggies, or if you're vegetarian, or if you're omnivore, whatever you're doing, a diet's just what you stick in your mouth. So unless you're one of those new people that breathe air as their preferred method of eating, which is just another version of population control at this point, you have a diet. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis, you have a diet. Everyone has a diet. All right, so all I did was go to Instagram, type in anti-diet, and search by recent and popular. I was just kind of curious what's out there, what people are talking about, who's involved in these conversations. So I saved some of the winners. And I'm using the term winners as in a Darwin Award kind of sense here, not not a good winner. So first off, we have, I wonder what would happen if we all refused to be weighed at the doctor's office. I haven't been weighed at the doctor's in almost a year, even for a physical. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get the wrong doses of medication. You're gonna miss intense fluctuations in your weight that might be due to a disease or illness that's undiagnosed. Tracking your weight's kind of like the baseline first step of taking care of yourself. It's how doctors understand that if you're healthy, you're maintaining or keeping a certain pattern versus if suddenly you drop 50 pounds and you're gonna die tomorrow. Or conversely, if you add in another extra 50 when you're already at the tipping point and bad things start happening to your body. That's bad advice. This one's fun. Dieting works for a period of time until it doesn't. Kind of like breathing. It works for a certain period of time until it doesn't. Man, you thought you did something there, didn't you? That was dumb. Newsflash. Most of the people selling you fitness and wellness are naturally thin and using that thin privilege to take advantage of you. Thank you, counseling for all seasons. Now here's the thing. I used to be one of those assholes who thought that people were born naturally thin, they were naturally had boulder shoulders and biceps. Cause I wanted to blame everyone but me for my choices. Meanwhile, I'm drinking eight to 12 Cokes a day wondering why I feel like total crap. People are born naturally thin or at least average and then your decisions of what you put in your mouth or what you choose to do with your activity levels determines on what you gain from there. Unless you have an extreme medical condition, stop blaming other people. Take some personal responsibility. 95% of diets fail. Yes, 95% of diets fail because 95% of people don't know proper nutrition, don't know how to exercise, and don't know how to stay committed to something. We are a nation of lazy people right now with an obesity epidemic. Of course 95% of diets fail because 95% of the people participating in diets are doing them in an irresponsible fashion for the wrong reason and they're just not getting the results they want because they're not putting in the actual work needed to get them. So yes, 95% of diets fail. 
So shouldn't that push you to be the 5% that succeeds? To not be like all the ones that are not succeeding in their life? Push yourself to be better. Self-responsibility. Yet again. Sophie says, People who are on diets are so interesting. It's always exciting to hear diet talk. Like, whoa! You haven't eaten bread for three weeks? I think I just got goosebumps. You feel lighter? Wow! Who will play you in the biopic? After three weeks, you don't want sugar? That's mad. And I notice that a lot in the anti-diet community when I'm searching through this hashtag. They hate people who are trying to better themselves. They despise people who are trying, who are putting forth their best effort to change themselves, their lifestyle, and their bad habits. They're so disingenuous and hateful towards people that just want to share their journey and what they're doing. And it's really sad to see such a toxic community thrive on a place like Instagram that has such a wide reach to anyone and everyone. It's not a good combination. Now here's my question to you. Do you actually hate the person trying to better themselves? Or are you mad at yourself for not doing better? Dallas Nutritional Counseling says, you are not addicted to sugar. <sighs> Did you know that all the negative publicity and research saying sugar is bad is a result of starvation and restriction? That's right. When subjects are fully nourished, they do not exhibit addictive behaviors with sugar. These behaviors are exhibited when subjects are underfed, restricted, or deprived of foods. Now I would love to know where that study's from, because of course, like everything else on Instagram, there's no sources, there's no real scientific research done, it's just someone putting the word nutritionist or nutritional counseling in their username and hoping people believe them. Not addicted to sugar. Sugar is one of the biggest problems in America right now. The daily recommended sugar content, like what the average adult should have sugar-wise, is 25 grams. Your average two-pack of Reese's is already about 20 to 25 grams of sugar depending on which version you're getting. Right there alone, you are at your sugar limit for the day. We put so much sugar in our food that's processed, bought in bags, fast food, everything is dosed with sugar because your body likes it, reacts to it well, and keeps you hooked. There are hundreds of studies about sugar being linked to addiction. Sugar addiction is a real thing, especially for people that are overweight, binge, or overconsume their food. It's a no-brainer. Why do you think so many big-valued food companies put sugar in their foods? It's not a hard thing to see. Except if you're this lady. To all of the I lost 50 pounds and I love myself so much posts, but what you'll realize, sis, is when the high wears off from all that attention, you are still the same you, and how you felt about yourself when you were fat will come creeping back. You don't fix the outside to fix the inside. Mic drops. If you're losing weight for attention, you're already losing weight for the wrong reason. You should be losing weight for yourself. And more importantly, it shouldn't be an aesthetic thing. Losing weight should never be for aesthetics. You should be bettering your body for your health and well-being and what you want to do with your life to help extend your activity levels, to make sure you're around for your kids, your family, grandkids, to ensure you're living a full, well-rounded, healthy life. If you're doing it for attention, you've already lost. That's not the right reason. That's not a good reason. And it never will be. Here's a novel concept. Lose weight for you. You owe it to yourself. Does anyone else feel personally attacked by lettuce buns? Who hurt you? Are you okay? Show me where the lettuce bun hurt you. Diet culture has made us scared of fruit. Fruit. The only fruit I'm scared of is pineapple. Because it eats you back. And that's fucking weird. I don't like that. My food shouldn't also eat me. Not into it. The intuitive analyst posts, stop. Stop moralizing your activity. There's no moral difference between eating pancakes or lifting weights. I think the big problem with the Hayes anti-diet community is they use moral and prioritize as the same interchangeable word, and they're not. 
No one's moralizing your eating habits. I'm not saying you eat chicken and rice, so you're a moral person. I've met plenty of jerks who shouldn't be in society that eat chicken and rice. And I've met some really good people that have a chocolate addiction. But what you eat and how you treat your body shows what you prioritize in your life. Do you prioritize health? Do you prior prioritize how you feel when you eat a certain thing? Is eating your whole personality and that's what you prioritize is your meals for the day. It just shows your goals and what you're trying to get out of your life and what you put forth, what you're putting in order of most important to least important. It's not a moral issue and I saw that a lot when I was going through the anti-diet hashtag was don't moralize our food, don't moralize our decisions. Unless you're hurting someone or killing someone, I'm not going to moralize your decision. What I'm going to do though is look at what you're prioritizing in your life to determine if I'm going to get along with you or not. That's human nature. Sorry. I'm not actually sorry. All right, so that was the Instagram hashtag of anti-diet. Kind of a few posts I kind of picked throughout. Um, a lot of nonsense, obviously. A lot of weird stuff, a lot of, oh, feel good about yourself. Don't worry about the complications. And that's the side of things I want to attack. I'm not attacking these people personally, I'm attacking what they're putting out there as a sort of community to make people feel good without actually giving them any beneficial advice. That's what's dangerous. That's what's causing the obesity epidemic to grow. That's what's making people think that their health and safety aren't important. And that's not okay. Everyone has a diet. What you eat day to day is your diet. You don't get to ignore that fact. It's just a fact. Whether you let that choose to define you or not is your choice. Just make sure you make a good one. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you want, follow me on Instagram under the same name, Wholesome Vigilante. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the anti-diet movement, what Instagram hashtags you've seen, what the haste community shows up in your feed with. I'd be really interested to know more. So have a good night.